Good afternoon, Scott Rutherford, Teeth 3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So the day after the Fed shocked the world, what happened? You know, sometimes after you see a big move, people think it's an over-exaggeration. They think it was, uh, you know, extreme. You know, and then you could usually judge that by the, the next few days. So the way you do that is figure out what type of retracement you have in certain stocks to make sure it wasn't over-emotional. And if you look here at the overall markets in the S&P, I think it's a you know, decent digestion day. You know, again, here's the rally that, or the trend that we've been following. You know, I'm gonna make this quick and not overlap too much, but here is where you had your little correction that started in July into late August. The trend line held. Here's when you could have switched some gears. You could have got some risk back on, because who knew what this was gonna wind up leading to? Wound up leading not to much. Normal four or five percent correction, the same way we had here after this outside type day. And then lo and behold, put some risk back on, all of a sudden digested higher. And then yesterday we busted through, you know, 1709. So today you take a look at it. All we had is somewhat of an inside day digesting what has been a really nice move, a tremendous move. And look how far we are away from the eight and the 21 and the 50. So with that said, you know, let's see if we digest sideways like we did right here before going and digest sideways like we did right here. So we'll see what happens. You know, all the, you know, tomorrow's quad witching and uh, lots of funny business does happen, so we'll see. You know, as far as individual stocks, this was one of our focus, and it's been a focus of ours all year. You know, not a lot of individual stock movement today, but here, you know, you see this trend that we've been talking about and hammering around, you know, following the 21 day, except for right here on that red dog reversal. And then we've had tight patterns three different times, or four. One, nice breakout. Two, nice breakout. Three, nice breakout. And then recently, it's been consolidating, hugging the 8 and 21. Then today, another nice breakout. Okay, whether it was the upgrade, whether it was the autopilot, whether it was a strong trend and, you know, the, the short flow. Either way, nice day. There were some, you know, some people were talking about maybe a secondary, you know, so it came a little bit off the highs, but ultimately it acted well. So let's hope that there's not a surprise secondary, and if there's not, perhaps this continues. Almost was like an Elon Musk day because you look at Solar City also, you know, different sector, another nice pattern. This is when this stock woke up. You had a big potent wide range bar, then it went sideways, flagged two different days yesterday. You know, it was on the move today. You got some follow through. It was definitely a little wishy washy, you know, as far as the thin intraday action, but overall, nice, nice you know, nice scenario. Those guys who are trying to look for a trade in Apple, you just got yourself a nice little three-day oversold type trade. You know, this has been more of a, obviously a trade than a real hold. Here's this lower range, okay? Uh, we were able to actually stay in a little bit longer <laughs> during this time period when, you know, gapped up after earnings. And then once this upper area got negated on invitation day, right around 5.03, you run for the hills. If you sold it well, you know, you were able to reposition when it retested this. And now it, you know, you had your three-day move. So now it's really going to have to prove whether it could hold higher before potentially trying to fill a bit more of this gap. So at this point, you know, nice little trade. If you have some overnight because Carl is speaking at 415, I wish you luck. We'll see what happens. Ultimately, it could fill this gap. But, you know, again, I guess it's hanging by a thread, thread technically, just wasn't as pent up as what took place here once this broke. But a nice overall three-day bounce. Facebook still looks really good, you know, on its way. Um, you know, th this trend has been really strong. Lots of nice little buyable patterns here. You know, here is right after earnings. Here is when it, you know, went above this. Here was a little wishy-washy, right? When it kind of shook itself up, came back below the eight, almost like what Tesla did, and then reclaimed it real quick. And then uh, today it did close pretty strong. Still looks really good. You know, it's definitely a little bit extended, so I wouldn't be all in up here, but, you know, stick with the trend until the trend changes. And it could have changed it right here, but it didn't. You know, little guy Zynga, which we talked about earlier this week, not the, you know, the biggest of uh, scenarios or focus, but you did get a nice little flag type pattern here. And here's your three day move right back into resistance up like 6% today. So something to do. So if you guys have been holding it, the banks still are a bit lethargic, uh, not sure what to make of it, but um, you know, we'll keep it on alert, see what happens here. Ultimately, this is support. Not enough juice yet to break above this high. Maybe next week once, you know, the, the whole Dow realignment is over tomorrow. But, um, you know, it hasn't really helped Goldman either. But, you know, I guess we're a little spoiled because you look at the move that Goldman already had from the, the lows here and from this gap. It's just, you know, not giving you the Goldman power that we used to have. But maybe because uh, they said gold would go to 1,000 <laughs> and then this took place. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people are calling for a, a new bull market in gold. This is the born of a, of a new era. I, you know, I don't think that you could say that yet. 
you know, this was your blood in the street lows. Here is your higher low. You know, it did give you another nice move. Once it, you know, cleared this area, we were all trading around that, and then boom, you know. So yesterday it did ignite, okay. You could have got involved if you weren't involved, if you switched gears when they said no tapering. You know, we were ready to buy when they said $5 billion, but they said no. So at this point, it, it's consolidating. So the longer it consolidates in the upper end of this area, the higher the probability this can continue. You know, I would say the gold miners came back a little bit further than some of the bulls would like. People are trying to say that, you know, this is a whole new trend, but you got to do a lot more work, you know, than this one bar to call a whole new trend. So we'll see what happens here. Um, this pulled in more than the actual metal, so we'll see what happens here. You know, much below today's low tomorrow, that negates the power of that, and that would make me a bit skeptical. The same way you look at the TBTs, everyone said that, oh, it's over. You know, your whole rates rising, rising theme, you know, is, is all out of whack, but... You know, you put it in perspective and look at the move that we've had here from, you know, the, the gap up that ignited it to when we cleared the 70 and then this trend, which has still been intact and it's still held the 50 day. So depending on your time frame, yes, you know, not really working right now, but overall it's been a really nice trend to help, you know, mitigate some of your bond losses and, and also as a, as a trader. At this point, if it were to break this area, you know, here's where I do think, you know, you could reposition because at some point in 2014, in my best opinion, this gets taken out. So it's all, it's all your time frame. You know, MGM, you know, for people who are really excited today, they, they have it in the drawer. This was one of our stocks from our 2013 thesis, and, and there it is. So, you know, we, we talk about time frames. We talk about all these different types of things, okay? Different types of things, if you come back to me, that, you know, develop your style, okay? Every, you know, December we come out with a thesis come out with like seven, eight, nine stocks that we think could work, maybe one or two countries. And we came around today on, t on uh, Twitter. I'm like, you know what? I might have made more money if I would have just bought the, you know, a basket of all the stocks that we thought would have the potential to, to be on the move this year. You know, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to uncompliantly not remember them all right now, but, you know, it was Boeing, Yahoo, uh, MGM, Facebook, um, Facebook, uh, Toyota, um, which were the five ones that worked pretty well. And then you have Mosaic, which is a little wishy-washy. And then we had uh, the, the Japan, Japan and actually Poland's waking up. You know, and then you know, we did some other calls of other things, but not really you know, technicals or price targets. But anyway, you know, so if you're an investor and you, and you, and you can't put 100% of your time into you know, trading the market on active intermediate trends, you should look at what we put out in the beginning of the year. If you're a trader, Watch us every day, learn to navigate. If you're a professional trader, you know, hopefully you'll tune in to, to Steve and, and Mike Lee. They're going to talk about trading the first 90 minutes, which is a time period of trading the open, which is where a lot of traders, even like myself, make the majority of their living using technicals and price action and other techniques. So you got to figure out where you live, where you want to live, where you want to apply your time. And hopefully if you do a mixture of it all, that's how you can really benefit from the equities market that will be here with or without us. Have a great night. It's Thursday. Tomorrow's the relaxed morning call. So, well, you know, I'll come visit you then.